refer to some, uh, every once in a while as an, uh, that he was an actor when he spoke to the public and, and uh, when he was presenting him in, in public for the masses, that that was acting. But while I read your book, I was thinking that that was actually the so-called real Hitler. And then he met foreign statesmen or diplomat was acting was acting like a rational statesman, as a normal statement, and I think that was acting. How do you comment this? Uh, yes, I agree with you. Um, Hitler was a supreme political actor in many ways, but the problem is that he believed in the part that he was acting much of the time. So in his big speeches, in the way he was uh, speaking in the Munich beer halls and elsewhere, he really believed the sentiments and therefore they had greater impact because it wasn't simply acting, it came from within. And the power and the passion that conveyed itself to, conveyed itself to his audiences. Uh, when he was speaking to diplomats, as you say, then he was able to turn on a different face. He was able to appear uh, very sensible, very rational, very cool. And I think also of um, a, meeting, a meeting that he had with all of the leaders of the Catholic Church in, um, in Germany, Cardinal Fallhaber, who had a three-hour meeting with Hitler alone in Bertha's Garden in 1936. And at the end of the meeting, Karl Hammer went back and wrote in his own private papers, I really think this is a man who truly believes in God. So Karl Hammer too, who was critical of the Nazis in so many ways, was persuaded by Hitler um, in this three-hour meeting. So Hitler did have this capacity to act and to turn on the act, he could turn on his rages and his anger, just as he could turn on the rational statesman performance. But the true Hitler, as you said, was the Hitler who comes uh, to life in the meetings, in the uh, meetings with his own party leaders, in the meetings in the Munich beer halls in the 1920s, who comes up with what look like absolute rantings, but which are uh, which are um, not pure propaganda, but they're ideas which are situated within him himself, and the power comes from that, from that combination. In Hitler's uh, view of war effort, German war effort, uh, uh, how important do you see, or for Hitler was uh, Finland as an on the northern flank, and especially the pets on nickel mines, uh, sometimes it's said that he was a bit obsessed about them and their importance and kept too much uh, elite troops in North, which, which were not actually, which could have been other fronts. Uh, I don't think um, he was particularly obsessed in that way by uh, the Petsamo nickel mines, but obviously the source of nickel was very, very important for the German war effort, and therefore Finland economically had a significant place. Uh, in the German war scheme. But in fact, more importantly than uh, just the economic advantages were of course the strategic position of Finland as um, controlling in many ways the path of the, the, path of the Baltic. And therefore uh, Finland, uh, from, in, from this point of view, was of vital importance to Germany. And uh, the efforts, of course, that Hitler and the Nazi leadership made to try to keep Finland on side, keep it on Germany's side, including actually the visit to Finland by Hitler in June 1942, where he met um, Marshal Mannerheim uh, when he flew to him on that, on that occasion. So, um, very important economically, vitally important strategically. That's how I think the Nazis saw Finland. Apart from that, no great interest.